Hi class, good day. Good day everyone. Welcome to our new video lecture. This time uh, we will we'll have uh, sample problems and theory questions. We did sa departmental exam. Makatulong ko siya class sa pararapit na uh, nalalapit na departmental exam niya. All right, so this uh, pertains to the forex transaction, some theory questions about the hedging and the derivatives. All right, so let's start. All right, well, first, uh, sample problems is about the import and export transaction. Okay, so use the following information for the next two questions. We have question below. We have two questions. So if this company had the following foreign currency transaction on April 1, 20X1. So first, purchase goods worth worth 40,000 francs from Swiss company based in Switzerland. And second transaction is sold goods with sale, sale price of 4,000 bolivars to Venezuelan company, a company based in Venezuela. So both the transactions were settled on April 30, 20X1. The following were the spot exchange rate. So we are buying and saving rate, right? So Questions, may the long question ito. So, nine natin si, how much is the forex gain loss on the purchase transaction? So, purchase, so malamang, um, import to siya. Kasi, bibili tayo ng, bibili tayo ng product of the other, from the other country. So, import. So, Balikan natin yung discussion natin sa forex transaction. Uh, formula natin yung for this. We have the ordering date, we have the transaction date, the balance sheet date, and the settlement date. So in here, sa problem, um, isinabi na dito yung transaction date. Kita natin, we have the purchase and sold. So yun yung transaction date niya. And then, I-identify natin dito kung mayroon bang balance sheet date. Wala, kasi yung settlement date, nauna pa doon sa balance sheet date. So, huwag na natin yung hintayin yung balance sheet date. So, dito pa lang, sa transaction date at saka settlement date, mayroon na tayong dapat i-recognize na as forex gain or loss. Alright, so, kaya tinatanong niya, anong yung forex gain or loss in the purchase transaction? The second question is, the foreign forex gain or loss in the sale transaction. So, nahin natin yung si import. Balik tayo sa theory. So, paano nga ba natin i-identify? Ano yung dapat gamitin natin na buying ah, the, the rate? Is it a buying or a selling rate? So, mahalaga yung, mahalaga yung class kasi nga um, pwede magkamali tayo. Baka sabihin natin pag import, buying rate. So, although alam na natin kung anong gagamitin natin pag transaction date, anong gagamitin? Na rate, historical rate. Pag sa balance sheet date, either sa tulo yun. Monetary or monetary asset, depende. So, the settlement date is the current rate. Right? So, alam na natin yun. But, doon tayo mamimili kung it's a buying or selling. So, basic lang class, balikan natin yung point of view ni foreign currency broker. Si FCB or si bank most commonly is as bank. So, in here's a problem. Um, si ABC company nag purchase ng goods to Swiss company, which is a foreign country, using a franc foreign currency. Right? So, um, yung wala tayong. 40,000 francs para pambili dyan kay Swiss company. So, ang gagawin natin, pupunta tayo sa bank. 
sa foreign currency broker. So, pupunta tayo doon. Dadala tayo ng pera natin, which is the peso. And then, ipapalit natin doon sa foreign currency broker, which is the francs. So, sabi natin, babalik doon tayo magtitingin sa point of view ni FCB, the foreign currency broker. So, may dadala ka ng peso, bibili ka na ngayon, bibili ka ngayon ng ng bank. So, ano si si FCB, si bank? Seller siya or a buyer? Hindi nga. I-post mo na itong video and then sagutan mo din on your list. Alright. So, si bank is a seller. So, siya yung magbibenta sa atin ng ng bank kapalit sa ating peso. So, since seller si bank, ang gagamitin natin is selling rate. So, pag import, automatic selling rate. Based dun sa, ano natin, sa example natin or sa, ano natin, sa explanation natin na sa point of view ni FCB. So, pag sa purchase goods worth 40,000 francs, ang gagamitin natin na exchange rate niyan is the selling rate. Okay? So, ang question ngayon, ano ba tong klaseng rate to? Is it a direct or indirect? Diba? Sabi dun sa theory natin, pag ang foreign currency unit ang na-express na one unit, ang tawag nun is a direct quotation. So, mahalaga yun. Eh. Mahalaga yung plus malaman natin if direct quotation or indirect quotation. Kasi nga, kasi pag direct, i-multiply natin. Pag indirect, i-divide. So, this time is, since ang foreign currency unit is ang one unit, is, this is called as a direct quotation. So, i-multiply na natin. So, alam natin kung ano yung gagamitin na rate natin depende kung anong date yun. So, gagawa natin ng entry para malaman natin kung kano talaga yung loss or gain. Maraming tayong gain. Right? So, journal entries for import using the selling rate. So, April 1, transaction date, of course, magre-record ka ng inventory. Ano ba? Inventory or purchases. Pili ka. So, 40,000 francs. Multiply mo ngayon sa 48 yung conversion rate natin. 48 is 81. So, total of 1,192,000,000. Million, so, of course, credit ka ng accounts payable. So, what's our next entry? Next is the settlement date. Ito yung sa transaction date. Transaction date. And Ito naman yung sa settlement date. So, April 30, nagbayad sa So, within the year lang, nabayadan ka agad yung ano natin, yung pag-purchase ng goods. So, we give it, of course, accounts payable. Yung pagkano yung na-establish natin na accounts payable na 1.992M. And then, of course, yung may wala pa tong 80,000, we create cash na 4,000 times 50. Bakit 50? Ito na yung rate ng settlement date. So, 50. So, 2 million. So, pag mayroon kang 2 million yung binayaran, pero ang na-establish mo na payable is 1.92 lang na utang, lumaki yung binayaran mo. So, ano to? Gain or loss? Of course, obvious na obvious. Loss yan sa class. Kasi mas malaki yung binayad natin. Di ba? Okay. So that's for the import. So this is the settlement date. So, so in a simply, kung hindi tayo tatanangin sa entry, simply, ililess mo lang yung dalawa, yung difference nila, transaction date sa kasi si settlement date is 2. Mumultiply mo lang ngayon doon sa francs na 
40,000. Sorry, this is 40,000, not 4,000. This is 40,000. So, the next questions. By the way, ang answer natin is letter D. Plus tayo ng 80,000. Next. How much is the forest gain on the sale of transaction? So, sale naman ngayon. So, nagbenta ka ng goods sa foreign country. Right? So, ang pera niya ngayon is bolivars. So, i-exchange natin yan to peso. So, pupunta ka ngayon kay bank. Bank, papalit ako ng peso sa 4,000 bolivars ko. So, ngayon, si bank ko or si foreign currency broker, ano siya? Ano yung, ano yung point of view natin kay, kay FCB? Siya yung buyer ba siya or a seller? Buyer siya ng foreign currency. Diba? So, papalitan niya ngayon peso yung 4,000 bolivars natin. So, kung buyer siya, ano ang gagamit na natin? Is a buying trade using this foreign currency. So, April 1, transaction date. Of course, ang journal entry natin is dili tayo ng account receivable. Dili tayo ng sales. 4,000 using this 10 times. Kasi direct. Direct quotation siya kasi ang foreign currency unit yung yung na-express as one unit. So, automatic. This is direct. 4,000 times 10 is equal to 40,000. Then credit sales. So, pagdating ng settlement date, so gagamitin natin is si 13. Binayadan na tayo. So, pag binayadan tayo, gagamitin natin exchange rate. Buying rate is 13 pesos. 13 pesos. So, receive tayo ng 52,000 ER um, cash from the customer. And then, yung na-recorded natin na ER is 40,000. And of course, meron tayong forex gain na 12,000. Pwede, 10 minus 13, lumaki yung receivable natin, times the 4,000. So, yun yung gain natin na i-recognize natin sa ano, OCI or PNL. Sa PNL. It's related to monetary, monetary assets. Um, receivables, monetary assets, monetary items. Part siya dun sa PNL natin. Both export and export natin. Gain or gain and loss. Alright? So, please na appreciate natin yung yung previous your, uh, video lecture natin, yung theory niya. Paano mag-determine kung ano ba sailing ba or buying rate pa gagamitin natin. But that's basic class. Okay, so next problem is number two. An entity whose main functional currency is the dollar. So, functional currency niya is dollar. Purchases machinery from a foreign supplier for 8 million euros on 31 October 2008. So, that's the transaction date. And the exchange rate was 1.5 euros. Versus one dollar. So, sino yung na express na as one unit is si dollar. So, si dollar ito yung foreign function currency nila. You value to local currency, local currency unit. So, is it direct or indirect? Pag si FCO ang naka one unit, it direct. But si LCO ang naka one unit, that's indirect. So, meaning Mahalaga yun, i-divide natin. So convert to the local currency value. At the entity's year end of December 31, so mayroong year end. The amount has not been paid, so not, di pa, wala pang settlement date. So mayroon na tayong dalawang uh, this, si transaction date at saka si uh, balance sheet date. So, the closing exchange rate is 
1.5 euros na binigay na exchange rate na sa transaction date mayroon din sa closing exchange rate so, which of the following statement are correct so the correct una i-record -re natin yung transaction date so anong recording na sa transaction date using the 1.5 euros so paano so i-divide natin na yun kasi nga indirect so property plan equipment debit 8 million divided by 1.5 is equivalent to 5.333 million. Yun yung ano natin, cost of historical cost ng property plan equipment natin. Transaction date, yun yung change, change rate niya. Then we have accounts payable, which is a monetary liability. This one is a non-monetary asset property plan equipment. This accounts payable is a monetary liability. Malaga yung class kasi magkaiba yung application natin with regard to the balance sheet date. Uh, balance sheet date uh, calculation of the value. Kailangan ba natin adjust yung value or not? So, next entry, balance sheet date. December 31, 2008. So, ang entry, mag-re-recognize tayo ng Forex loss na 1.07M. Bakit, sir? Paano nagawa? Ibas, unahin natin doon sa balance sheet date, we have a monetary asset and a monetary liabilities. I-change natin yung value, i-update natin yung value using what? The closing rate. While si non-monetary asset or si non-monetary liabilities no no change of value kasi nga recorded at cost na siya so historical rate na ang gagamitin natin yun ang yung cost niya like si here si property plan equipment hindi na natin siya i-change kasi non monetary asset siya ang i-change natin is si monetary liability that's why in here nagrecognize tayo ng forex loss of 1.07 paano natin ginawa sir so 8 million divide yung Closing rate ng date na yan, as of, of December 31, 2008, then i-list natin doon sa total na accounts payable natin. So, lumaki. Lumaki yung payable natin. Plus, lumaki. So, meaning, loss. Kapag payable, lumaki yung utang mo. Then, may loss ka. Pag receivable yan, lumaki yung receivable mo. Course, gain. Yeah. All right. So, so examples of the forex transactions. I hope na makarelate kayo, makapasit niyo yung theory na discuss natin class in the previous video lecture. Right. Balik balikan yon lang yon. Saka compare niyo dito sa problem natin para mas lalo mga appreciate. All right. So in the next um slide, so let's try to answer some theory of teaching. Okay. Part din sa exam niyo ngayong Saturday. Right? So, first question. All incorporated interest into a call option contract with Binet Investment Company on January 2, 2002. This contract gives all the option to purchase 1,000 shares of WSM stock at 100 per share. The option expires on April 30, 2002. WSM shares are trading at 100 per share, January 2, 2002. Which time all pays $100 for the call option? So, ang denied niya na for that option is $100. Question, the 100 shares of BS, uh, WSM stock is in this contract is referred to as what? A, the collateral. B, the notional amount. C, the option of premium. D, the derivatives. Ngayon natin si the derivatives. Si derivatives, ang, ang definition ni derivatives is a financial instrument. So, most common um, example of types of derivatives are the what? Uh, forward contracts, future contracts, option, and swap. Um, ano pa? Ano yung mga types of swap? Interest rate swap, foreign currency swap. And another is caps, floors, and Colors. 
yun yung mga derivatives. As a whole, isa yan siya. Yung C option is one of the types of der derivatives. Not the 100 shares. So, how about si the option premium? Ano yan siya? Si option premium, yun yung binayad mo sa option. So, ano yung binayad mo? So, $100 for the call option. Yun yung pinatawag na option premium. So, ano naman yung collateral? Wala yan. Wala yan collateral. Yan. So, the answer is letter B. The 1,000 shares is called the notional amount. So, ano yung definition ng notional amount? Ano nyo yan sa book? is a specified unit of measures. Number of units, number of shares, number of bushes, pounds, and etc. Yun yung notional amount. Right? So, how about number four? Alpha Company purchases a call option to hedge an investment in 20,000 shares of Beta Company stock. The option agreement provides that if the price of a share of Beta Company stock is greater than $30 on October 25, Alpha receives the difference multiplied by 20,000 shares. So, yun. So, nakalagay lang greater than. Ang class, greater than. Salamat na tinong mayat. Okay. Kailangan nyo. Alternatively, if the price of the stock is less than $30, the option is worthless and will be allowed to expire. Which of the following statement regarding this call option is correct? For example. So, the call option effectively Hedge the investment in the shares of beta stocks. Stock. So, ano yung criteria pala maging hedge? Yung isang derivatives. So, the for the derivatives instruments to qualify as PG instrument, the following two criteria must be met. Ano yun? Una, yung sufficient documentation, tsaka yung the hedge must be highly effective throughout, the, throughout its effectiveness. Uh, yeah. So, kailan highly probable forecast transaction siya. Right? So, isa yan sa mga characteristics ni page items. So, highly effective ba si call option dyan? By the way, si call option is an option to buy. While sa uh, put option is an option to sell. In reference yun ang rapag. Call option is an option to buy. Right? By like, for example, sa example ni uh, book ni Milan is like, you purchase uh, a call option to to monkey, and in that option, uh, you have the right to to buy banana at this uh, at five pesos per per kilo. Yan ang example. Diba? So, but if the market price is twelve, so mayroon kang mayroon kang right to exercise to exercise na pwede mong bilhin yung banana niya kasi tag 5 pesos lang compared doon sa market na tag 12. So, if ever na paliktad, yung price ni, ang sa price mo is 5 na bibilin option mo is, but the price the market is 3, so rather, bibili ka na lang sa market kaysa kay doon kay A. So, yun yung call option. Yung put option, right to sell naman. Right to sell. So, Balik tayo sa questions. So, the call option ba effectively hedge the investment in the shares of the stock? Nag-namit niya ba yung dalawa? So, mayroon bang highly probable forecast transaction? Wala. Talagay greater than or less than lang. So, letter B, the call option is an option to sell. So, mali na. Kasi si call option is an option to buy, not to sell na calls na itong dalawa, A and B. Tingnan natin si C. The call option represent a speculative option rather than a hedge. So, kakala. Uh, Mataas yung incur, incur, ma-incur ng risk nito. So, ganyan. Kasi nalagay, greater than, at least that. So, tama ba na? It's more on a speculation option siya. So, tingnan mo natin si letter D. Alpha could have a purchase of both option or a call option to effectively hedge the investment in the shares of it. So, una pa lang, 
hindi effective yung teaching instrument dito, yung derivative instrument dito. Hindi siya effective. So, false na to si letter D. So, the answer is letter C. The call option represents a speculative option rather than a hedge. So, straight to yung video, ano, yung guidelines ni hedging. Right. So, number five. Which of the following statement about options and their underlying assets is false? So, the value of an option in comparison to its underlying assets has the potential of creating an RB trades opportunity? Yes. It has the potential of creating a trades opportunity. Diba? Kaya na sa example natin kanina. So, baka makapag-gain ka doon. Kasi nga, baka yung market price is mahal. Yung bibilin mo kay Mang Kina at tag 5 pesos yung banana, mura na yun. Letter B, the owner of the option is legally required to engage in transaction involving the asset. So, take note yung letter B at saka letter D class. May, pagka, may similar sila pero nagkakaiba doon sa owner or seller. Pero before tayo mag-judge, tingnan mo natin natin. The holder of a long position of an option is the only party with the right to initiate a transaction involving. Of course, kasi yung holder, holder siya lang yung right to initiate or to exercise that, that option. Right? So, either B and C, D. Ano ba? Si seller ba dyan or si owner? Ang right dyan is si seller. Siya yung nagbibenta ng option. Wala tayong term na owner dyan. This is false. The answer is false. Letter B. So number six, which of the following statement accurately describe how future contracts differ from forward contracts? So future and forward contracts. So ano yung forward contracts? is an agreement between two parties to exchange a specified amount of commodity, security or foreign currency, or a specified date in the future, or at a predetermined advent price. Actually, the difference, the, um, the present and the law is the future is more on the standard contract or yeah, um, publicly traded, like for example, in sa, mayroon tayong currency exchange in a world market or in a stock market, meron din yung mga commodity, foreign, uh, foreign currency exchange, o ito yung uh, Bitcoin dyan, mga sample dyan. Naka-publicly traded dyan sila. So, mostly example dyan, yung future contract dyan na uh, belong si uh, organization siya sa uh, mga broker. Mga so, while si forward contract kasi um, agreement to between two, par two parties or a private company or private contract of our private individual. Meaning, mga co-customize nila yung, ano, yung kontrata nila. Whereas si future is naka-standard. Uh, is doon sa trading. Nakapublicly traded yan siya. So, A is future contracts are standardized. Future, B, future contracts requires a daily discipline of gain or loss. So, kailangan. Uh, daily, mayroong fluctuating yung mga rate dyan. Uh, mayroong gain or loss tayo dyan. Just like a currency, foreign currency exchange. So, let us see. All of these choices are correct. Tingnan natin si D. The performance of counterparties to a future contract is guaranteed by a hearing house. Yun yun, si Meron tayong broker dyan na sinasabi dyan. Bibili tayo dyan. Tayo na. Sa po, kung dito yung oil. Kasi alam natin yung oil, di ba? Very nag-high yung, ano, yung prices mo. Pwede tayo mag-for-contact dyan or picture contact. Right? So, the answer is letter C. By the way, if your future contract is a contract traded on an exchange that allows an entity to buy or sell a specified quantity of commodity or yeah, commodity, a put fuel, good oil, or a financial security by specified price on a specified future date. So, 
Merong differentiation dyan sa books. Basically, standardize, contract, customize it forward, there are some features, hindi siya no, standardize yung contract niya, hindi siya customize. Yung sa forward, it's one of the type of derivative. Si forward contract sa future. Right? So, another example, another uh, example theory, which of the following statement about swap agreement is false. So, meron tayong dalawang swap na sinasabi, di ba? Interest rate swap and si foreign currency swap. So, A, which is false daw, they are standardized agreement similar to futures. So, the swap contract, a uh, swap is a contract then in which Two parties are this to exchange payments, so not not like in future is um naka standard yung ano hindi siya yung basis na contract na para na makakustomize din like the forward contract payments in the future based on the movements of some agreed upon price of the rate within interest rate swap or foreign currency swap. Pwede natin answer si letter A, but tingnan natin si letter B. Counterparties are the principal, principals who engage in a swap agreement. So, both yung both parties, di ba? Sila yung ano, nag-agree doon sa exchange. Either payment in the future based on the movement of some agreed upon price of pay. Letter C, they allow, they allow for the exchange of different sets of future cash flows, di ba? Sila yung parties. They allow. So, nag-agree sila ng swap. One of the characteristic of so. Interest rate and currency are common types of swaps. So, di ba? Sabi ko yung interest, interest rate swap or currency, foreign currency swap. So, si B, C, D is true. So, the answer is better A. Standard disagreement is si ano lang, si future contract lang. Yan lang yung standard disagreement. Last question, which of the following statement about forward contract is correct? A long trader agrees to, wala yung classroom, either to take delivery or to make delivery. So the answer again is B, take delivery in a, a short trader agrees to make delivery. All right, so class, um, good luck sa departmental exam nyo. So, by the way, um, may, may theory lang akong nilagay sa exam nyo about the aging and derivatives. So, but expect na magsisend para lang ako ng mga video lecture about the continuation of this topic. Right? So, bye-bye for now, class. God bless.